Hey guys, Tierra here with Dot Girl Fitness and today's video is about how to shine in that curriculum vitae. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. I'm Dr. Tierra Range, a new pediatric resident physician. My content focuses on medicine, lifestyle, and fitness. So if you like videos like that, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another one. This video is episode three of my series about residency application season. So make sure to hit this link, which will take you to the playlist so you can watch episodes one and two, and then you can come back around to this video once you're all caught up. Now that we've learned how to ask for letters of recommendation and how to prepare for the personal statement, it's time to discuss the curriculum vitae. Now, first of all, what is a curriculum vitae? Well, according to dictionary.com, a curriculum vitae is a detailed account of one's work experience, professional training, and educational background as prepared by a person applying for a job. In academia, the curriculum vitae is used in place of a resume and includes the applicant's teaching and research experience, a list of publications, and any grants or fellowships awarded. Things that are very important to include in a curriculum vitae include sections about awards, volunteerism, research, any jobs you've worked, and I also like to add a personal touch in the form of a hobbies and interests section. Just because they're going to already ask you to include this information in your ERAS, so by already having this all typed up in your curriculum vitae that you provide to your letter writers, by the time you start working on that ERAS application, all you have to do is copy and paste directly into the blanks of your ERAS application. It's also important to make this curriculum vitae as much like what your letter writers are used to seeing, which is that same format that you will get with the ERAS application. Your letter writers are more often than not also going to be some form of residency application reviewers for the upcoming residency application season. So most of them will already be used to this format. I thought it would be best if today we go over the order of the curriculum vitae and the order that I suggest you prepare it for your letter writers, and we'll talk about each subheading and some things you should consider including in them. Your first section will be medical education. This is probably the simplest section because all you're going to include there is where you currently attend medical school. And I also like to include what your GPA is. As I said in the video about asking for letters of recommendation, most of your letter writers are already going to ask for a copy of your transcript, but it's great to just have a little bit of information about an overall picture of how you look on your transcript by including your GPA right at the top of that CV. The next section of your curriculum vitae should be pre-medical education. This is where you will put any information about education you received after high school, but before medical school. For me, this was as simple as just putting where I went to college, but if you have any other kind of educational experience, like a master's degree, any kind of post back or a PhD, then this is where you would put that information. Next up is membership in honorary or professional societies. This is where you would put things like AOA, Gold Humanism Honor Society, and also any national associations that you are a member of. For example, in addition to being a member of an honor society, I also paid for membership to the American Medical Association and the American Medical Women's Association. So I included these in this section as well. Also something important to include not only in this section, but also for every additional section in the rest of this curriculum vitae is some kind of timestamp of when you became a member of different organizations and when you participated in different activities. For example, I joined the American Medical Association or AMA when I was in my fall semester of my first year of medical school. I personally feel that adding specific dates to a curriculum vitae is not any more beneficial than add in the season as well as the year in which you do different things. So putting something like American Medical Association and then fall 2016 all on the same line, that's just as beneficial to anybody reading the curriculum vitae as would be me putting the specific date that I acquired a membership to AMA. That also makes things a little bit easier for anybody writing their CV because it's very hard to keep up with all of the dates of every single thing you did in med school, especially if you haven't been documenting this every step of the way. Once those memberships and honorary or professional societies are filled out, 
we can move on to the next section, which is certifications. This is a very simple section, but one that is just another opportunity for you to shine as it is a box that you have to fill out on your ERAS and most medical schools do require you to take some kind of basic life support training before you start participating on the wards in your clinical years. If you've acquired any other type of certification along your medical journey, this will be the section to place them. Once we've finished that up, it's time to move on to leadership activities. This is simply where you'll put any club that you have held some type of leadership position in. Regardless of whatever title you acquired in these organizations, I still suggest that you place them in the CV in chronological order. So for example, if you became secretary of a club this year, but you were president of a club two years ago, I wouldn't place the club that you were president of highest on your curriculum vitae because it's not going to catch the eye of whoever's reading your curriculum vitae anymore, whether it's higher or lower on your list of accomplishments. By keeping everything in chronological order, you're really helping whoever's reviewing your curriculum vitae to have a better picture of your involvement throughout your time in medical school in a very clear and organized fashion. Once again, there's no real need to include exact dates here. Just make sure to include the season and the year that you were involved in these activities, and that should be a clear enough picture for anyone who's reading your CV. Next up is volunteerism. So absolutely any volunteer experience should go in this section. And don't forget to include those volunteer experiences that you perform as a requirement for your school. Most medical schools incorporate some kind of altruistic or volunteerism experience as a requirement for graduation. Many people forget to include these activities in their CV because there was a grade that they got as a result of this volunteer work, but it still counts. So don't forget to put that experience on your CV. Now, aside from using the generalization to include the season and the year in which you completed this volunteer work, I do otherwise suggest that you are very specific when explaining what you did in the volunteer work. Things you should be sure to include are the title of the volunteer experience, a brief description, the number of hours of volunteer work you did with this project, and at least one point of contact for someone who can verify that you actually completed these hours of service. For anyone watching this who is early on in their medical career, I would go ahead and from the beginning of medical school, start making a log of at least one point of contact with their name, email address, and phone number and also I would keep a log of how many hours you work at each volunteer experience. That way, whenever you reach the point to where you're applying for residency, you don't have to spend a lot of time backtracking to find this information while you already have a lot of other things on your plate to worry about. Because this section is very important to the curriculum vitae and also one that people have a lot of trouble with, I'll give you an example based off of one of my volunteer experiences. In the spring of my first year of medical school, I volunteered for my local food bank. This involved me packing boxes of food for the elderly that they could either pick up if they wanted or other people who were involved in the food bank could ship these boxes to their homes. I also packed bagged dinners for children who were involved in an after-school program that allowed them to receive additional food services for dinner from their school so they wouldn't have to worry about going hungry at night. As a part of this after-school educational program, I also worked with the students in these schools to educate them about healthy eating habits. So my explanation of this volunteer experience was something like this. Food Bank Backpack and Senior Box Programs, Spring 2017. Volunteer, eight hours. Created food boxes for families in underserved areas, as well as distributed bag lunches to elementary school children while educating them on the importance of healthy diet and exercise. Although brief, this title, season, year, number of hours, and short description very quickly and adequately describe all the things that I did while I was a part of this service project. I probably spent the most time on the volunteer experience portion of my CV because it takes a while, once again, to accumulate all of this information about each service project and also find a way to shortly describe everything you do. Now that we've described all of our volunteer work, let's move on to work experience. 
Not many people work during medical school because it does require a lot of time and attention on its own, but if you do have any substantial work experience, this would be the place to put it. Also, if you have any substantial work experience, this is also a great place to put that information. Many of my classmates worked in the medical field prior to starting medical school, either as scribes, EKG or ultrasound techs, and some worked as nurses before starting medical school. So they would put that information in this portion of the CV. I worked all throughout medical school, so I put that information in this section. If you didn't work through your school years of medical school, but you worked in the summers, don't forget to include that in this section too. This could be a non-medically related job or a medically related one in the form of working as a teaching assistant or TA or as a research lab assistant. And speaking of that, next up is research experience. Make sure to note who your PI or your principal investigator is and then give a brief description of the research performed and what your role was in performing that research. I wouldn't put any published article references in this section because there is another section where you can include that type of information. But if there is an article that resulted from this project that is not yet published but is under review for publication, then you can always include that as a part of the brief description for the research project. It could be as simple as just adding after the last sentence under review for publication in italics. Now we can move on to the next section where we talk about the articles that are published. So in this portion of the ERAS application, they will ask you to differentiate your publications based off of different subheadings, peer-reviewed journal articles or abstracts, poster presentations, oral presentations, and peer-reviewed online publications. So I would go ahead and do this in your CV now so you can make your life easier when you're filling out that ERAS application. If you're confused at all about which category your research publication falls under, always feel free to reach out to your principal investigator for more clarification. Next up is other awards or accomplishments. This is a great section to include all major awards and accomplishments that you obtain in your pre-medical school life. I personally obtained a lot of accomplishments in college, and this small section was where I was able to place them all. Once again, as I said earlier, this is where you would include any information that's after high school, but before starting medical school. I wouldn't include any major accomplishments that you accrued throughout your high school time period, as that is a little bit too far removed from your current medical journey. Finally, we've reached that last section of hobbies or interests. Here is where I put a little blurb about what I like to do in my free time. Don't forget that this could be yet another opportunity for you to provide more depth of who you are as an applicant and what you can bring to the table. So I also tried to include information here that really didn't fit any other categories, but I could spin it in a way that would make sense in this section. Here's an example of what I put in my hobbies and interests section. I love spending time outdoors and enjoy early morning and late afternoon solo runs, Saturday hikes, and tennis double matches with my friends. I frequently compete in 5K races, and although now I just play tennis for fun, I was a member of my college tennis team. I also enjoy learning piano pieces, almost all of which are by my favorite composer, Claude Debussy. I began playing piano at an early age, have performed for local events in town, and accompanied my school's choir in high school. As you can see, I tried to use every single space of the CV to not only talk about things that make me unique, but also include things that may not particularly fit into my current medical journey, but were things that I felt were important to who I am and also were major accomplishments throughout my life. This takes a little bit of work, so although it seems like the simplest section, it also may be another section that takes you a little bit more time than the others. But once you've finished it, I'm glad to say that you'll finally be done with that curriculum vitae. And that's pretty much it guys! I really hope this helps you better understand how to prepare your curriculum vitae not only for your letter writers but also helps you so you can easily copy and paste this information into your ERAS application. And speaking of that, 
you should be starting to do that right now. Seeing as how ERAS is now open to hopeful applicants for this residency application season. Once again, don't forget that the first available date for your application to be submitted to residency programs across the country is October 21st. So begin working on it now and make sure to get your application in by that date. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or just want to chat, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like videos on medicine, lifestyle, and fitness, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.